Hey heretics, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sarah, I'm the Heretical Witch, and today we are getting some messages for our full moon in air. Go ahead and get into it here. Um, I do have a couple of notes that I wanted to mention and then we'll pull some cards. I do want to say just overall, I know this is obviously a full moon in Aries and a lot of times when we hear that things are in the sign of Aries, we know that things can get a little fiery, a little intense, a little heated. I did just want to say energetically right out of the gate, I am not feeling that this full moon is going to be the worst of the worst, right? I am. Um, so I just wanted to quell that fear in case you had any right now. I do have some instructions from the Morrigan here for us in how we can utilize the energy of Aries for this full moon, but I'm not seeing a ton of any particularly personal challenges um, with this with this full moon. Now, of course, with all full moons, we do have some energetic tension, but I think for the majority of us, if we wake up on the day of the full moon and we're like, hey, it's a full moon, you know, uh, we know what to prepare for. We know what we're in for. And it's it's generally not the end of the world. So the first thing I wanted to call attention to is it is incredibly important for all of us, those that walk a spiritual path, those that consider themselves to be on the path of love, authenticity. Um, we have to get really good at being okay when we are seated across the table from someone that disagrees with us. Now, I know this has been a pretty constant theme for the entirety of our collective. Obviously, we are extraordinarily divided politically, socially, and all the rest of it. But with the energies of this full moon being in Aries, a sign that is very fiery, a little combative, one might say, um, it is a time in which we can kind of flex those muscles, our ability to be okay, be comfortable, be secure when we are faced with someone that does not see the world the way that we do. The Morrigan kind of put this in the context of our collective consciousness expansion in that it is, the way she's phrasing it to me now, it is time for our kind, our species to expand into the energy of being okay when faced with disagreement. Um, the sort of affirmation that she has been giving to me over the past couple of days as I'm sitting with this is very simple, very to the point, seems a little obvious, but is necessary sometimes. You are safe when someone disagrees with you. And I also think that for a lot of us, and I'm really calling myself out here, um, it can become uncomfortable when faced with someone that disagrees with you on any number of topics, religion, politics, you name it. It gets uncomfortable because we have this story running in the background in our head that if someone does not see the world the way that I do, they will force their view upon me. And a lot of this comes from childhood wounding, right? Um, raise your hand if your parents definitely forced their view of the world onto you, even when you very much did not see it the same way that they did. And, you know, I'm smiling now because I... I have some awareness of this process and I've done quite a bit of healing, but it is extraordinarily painful when you think back to being this small, curious, intuitive being, spiritual being as a child where your intuition was the strongest it might have ever been, you know? Now, if you're on an awakening path, maybe not so much, but certainly when you're a child, your intuition is on fire and you're being guided to view the world in the highest of the highest possible order. You're seeing the world around you through the highest possible timeline because you are this innocent, pure being of light. And then the adults that are surrounding you, parents, teachers, you know, it's not just, I don't want to just harp on our parents here. It's, it's all the adults, all of the adults in the society that have had their own personal light, their own personal sovereignty tamped down by the version of humanity that we have been living in. And then they seek to impose that upon you. And so when you go through this over and over and over again growing up, you start to form this story in your head that if the person across from me does not see the world the way that I do, then they have the power and the authority and they certainly will try to force that upon me. And now this is further compounded and further emphasized by 
people do kind of act like that, like still. Now, the Morrigan, again, constant affirmation, transmuting the darkness into light. You are a sovereign creator, a sovereign being, a sovereign God here on this planet. Even though people act as though they are able to force their view of the world upon you, they're not. You have total and complete control over your consciousness. And um, yes, there's healing in that. There's shadow work in that to regain that control for a lot of us. So I don't want to make light of that process. But there is no one on this planet that can force their view of the world upon you. So it is worth affirming that to ourselves. You are safe. And also, oh, by the way, while there are members of our collective that do have concentrated power, and so in those situations, it becomes a little bit more important to have debates and discussions about the way the world should be. The average, your average citizen, especially your parents, literally have no power. Like truly, literally have no power to force their view of the world upon you. You're only really looking at a small, unfortunately, a small handful of fellow humans that have any sort of authority to actually impose that upon the rest of us. And so in those situations, sure, debate, engaging in ideas is always a good idea. But when it comes to your average everyday encounter, you are safe even if someone disagrees with you. It's important to remind ourselves of that and also to sit with the wounded inner child that maybe doesn't believe that, uh, validate their feelings, hold their hands, support them through this journey. But it's important for us to get to a level of healing. And again, as the Morgan explained to me, expand as our consciousness is evolving, expand into this energy of rest and being okay when you're in a situation where someone disagrees with you. It is so important that we do that because you cannot express the entirety of your consciousness if you are in this reactive combative mode. It is from this sense of knowing, like deeply knowing that we are okay amidst disagreement that then affords us the time and energetic space to create. Um, and so that is what we are working towards. Now, I do want to say a couple of other things. This, of course, also plays into the concept of freedom of speech. And um, I wanted to read this. This is from the Morgan as well. Your comfort level in the face of disagreements dictates whether or not you are able to be convinced that infringing upon the First Amendment freedom of speech is acceptable. Basically, the reason, one of the reasons, there are many, but one of the reasons we are seeing such an uptick in pockets of humanity being okay with blurring the lines between freedom of speech, the First Amendment, all of that, is because of their discomfort level at the notion of sitting across the table from someone that disagrees with them. A lot of times when we hear people talk about this, they're, they take this tone of like, we used to be able to do this. I don't I don't think that that's true. I think that for quite some time, we had been repressing this energy and pretending that it wasn't there. And by virtue of the fact that we are one step closer to the tower falling in tower time, everyone's everything is coming to the surface. We can run from nothing in these times. And so the wounds from the past that are dictating what we will and will not tolerate in the future are also bubbling to the surface. And I did just want to call attention to, you know, when I talk about freedom of, this, of speech, uh, the ability to be okay when someone disagrees with us, there's a tendency for those of us that see things this way to go, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. It's those people that are doing that. It's, it's those people that, ha that are trying to infringe upon freedom of speech. And you're not wrong, uh, but I did just want to caution us against thinking that we don't have any healing to do in this space um, because a lot of us do. And so even if you're someone that very, very adamantly believes in the necessity and the importance of freedom of speech as I am, um, that doesn't mean that there isn't some wounding and some discomfort that needs to still be processed and healed from in this particular space. I, I get scared when I am seated across the table from someone that disagrees with me. Specific topics, um, it, it's, and it's also specific people. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, anytime my parents bring up religion, I get real nervous, real nervous. And it's that particular shadow that's getting poked, this idea that if I'm unable to convince them that it's okay for me to disagree, then they'll somehow be able to force me to do what they do. And that's just simply not true. Um, but it makes complete sense, given my background, why my consciousness would still kind of be feeling that. So I did want to share a practice. Now, I've shared this before, but it's been quite some time. 
um, a practice that I use and that the Morgan is encouraging us to use on this full moon to help expand that ability of being okay when someone disagrees with you. And the reason I use this practice is because what usually happens in the shadow work process is you intellectualize what you're feeling. Maybe you do some energetic healing as well. Very important. But then you kind of have to wait for a disagreement to happen before you can test out the new muscles that you're developing spiritually. I like to circumnavigate that and bring the argument to me without really bringing any energy out into the world. So what I do, very simple, very simple. I find usually YouTubers, could be TV shows, of people that I know are gonna trigger the absolute fuck out of me for something that they believe. And I try to pick the most egregious examples of this. So not just people that can respectfully articulate a disagreement, but like people that are known to be extraordinarily aggressive and rude in the way that they articulate what they believe. I will find those people and I will sit down on my bed in front of my TV and I sit in a little meditation pose. I'll hold my crystals, you know, maybe I'll hold on to my Morrigan rosary for support and I'll watch the whole thing. And I'm not, what I am not trying to do is bully myself into not caring. It's very important you don't do that. It's not about bullying yourself into not caring. It's also not to train your brain to dismiss them of like, oh God, you know, this person's just being low vibrational, you know, just a bad person. No, we're not doing that either. What we're doing is, oh God, it's not easy. We are practicing truly radical empathy as we look them dead in the eyes. Now, again, they don't know. It's not a true interaction, right? And you're not physically in front of them. So it's not a perfect one-to-one practice run. Although that is why I choose the most egregious examples of this, because I don't usually meet people that are that rude and that aggressive. So it's kind of like a scaled up practice while also you're in the safety of your own home. So that part isn't as intense. Anyway, what you're looking for is the vibration of radical empathy. And I will also say, oh my God, this is so difficult. Um, don't lie to yourself. That's the other thing. You're not doing this for anyone. You're not doing this for anyone but you. So don't lie to yourself. If you watch a whole, I've watched like a whole like hour long podcast with someone before and been like, I didn't get it. <laughs> I tried. It didn't happen. I didn't hit that stage of empathy yet. Um, so sometimes what I will do to kind of get the ball rolling energetically is I will look them in the eyes, sitting, holding my crystals and shit. And I will simply, as they say what they are saying in this aggressive tone, um, I will simply just repeat to myself that I am safe. I am okay. They cannot, they have no power over me. Their beliefs have no power over me. So I'll start with that. The next thing I'll do is maybe bring in a little bit of intellectualization, right? Maybe I'll intellectualize, well, why do they believe that? You know, maybe I start to imagine what could have happened in their life to bring them to that point. And then the longer you do this, the more you sit with it. What I usually like to do is envision the person as a small child. And now you're projecting a little bit when you do this, but you're also using your intuition kind of being guided that what the hell could have happened to them as a kid to bring them to this point? You know what I mean? Especially the more grotesque examples of this, of like, holy shit, dude. Like you were once a small child full of light and full of optimism. What the fuck happened? And uh, again, it's not a condescending, like I am so much better than you tone. So you really do have to be radically honest with yourself as well in this practice of radical empathy. You can't lie to yourself. You can't make it up. And again, the point of this is to help rewrite the neural pathways in your brain so that the next time you're seated across the table from someone that is saying something that kind of viscerally like, oh, ha, I can't believe you just said that. Um, it's not that you're not supposed to have that emotion. You are. When someone says something horrifically unempathetic, you should have that like, ah, huh, huh, I can't believe you just said that. Like you should react like that. But it's about not getting stuck there. Being able to transmute that energy, work through that energy. And also, if you're interested, if there's something that you know calls to you, interact in that conversation in a way where you're not making things worse by coming from this place of how dare you, right? 
Um, so it's an energetic practice, something the more again put into my head as I was getting ready. So I do recommend if this is something that intrigues you, give it a shot on the full moon, make a whole ritual out of it. Light a candle, write down an intention of like, listen, I am doing this genuinely, truly, I am doing this to help myself heal, but also to help expand into this elevated sense of empathetic consciousness. That is something that we're all moving towards. Uh, this shift, collective ascension is happening. It is a process underway, but it requires you doing things. So if you were looking for something to do to help expand that empathy, that unconditional love light for humanity, this is uh, a practice you can incorporate and it's not easy. It is not easy. You shouldn't be able to do it the first time. Uh, if you can do it the first time, you haven't found someone egregious enough yet. Keep going. Okay, I am going to go ahead and do something I haven't done in a while and I kind of miss doing. I am going to shuffle my animal oracle deck and I'm going to ask for an animal archetype to come through to really lead us in this message of, oh, okay. I got two cards. The first card that jumped out at me was the card of Firefly. And I will read the book definition of Firefly, but I also got the card of Wolf. And I know what the card of wolf means. So I want to start here because I don't need the guidebook. The wolf is an archetype of someone who believes what they believe in a very intense way. They're someone that stands for justice, sovereignty. They are incredibly, incredibly passionate about the things that they are fighting for. Where the wolf runs into a little bit of hot water, and I'll be damned if it's not what I was just talking about. The wolf archetype tends to, because they are so passionate about what they believe, they tend to bully over people that don't agree with them. It's very much this my way or the highway vibe and energy. Obviously, a huge theme that we have been seeing in the collective <laughs> is this idea of cancel culture. And I was actually just listening to a podcast about this as I was getting ready. Uh, funny how these things work. Um, so... Yes, we have been very concerned in the collective about the idea of cancel culture. And I should also mention both sides of the political aisle have a version of cancel culture. Um, and we've been kind of hyper fixated on, on dissecting why is this happening? There's a lot of things at play, a lot of things that my intuition has revealed to me over the years. A lot of it has to do with tower time and the collective shift. A lot of it has to do with the machinations of the old guard, manipulation, propaganda, um, but another cause of this is one that I think, ironically, helps to bring a little bit of empathy to those that engage in cancel culture. A lot of times when we see this, although not always, it's young students, college students that are the most egregious example of cancel culture. And what I've started to do lately, especially when it comes to political division, is yeah, I mean, I don't agree with what you're doing, and I certainly will speak on that because we shouldn't just let inappropriate behavior fester and go unchecked. But also, I can see from the lens of radical empathy, I can actually see a massive positive in what is happening. Those that tend to enact this energy of cancel culture, this outrage culture, they have a very clear vision for what the world should be. And they are very passionate about that. There is this underbelly, this undercurrent in the collective of wanting things to not suck so bad. And I'm making light of it, but genuinely, there is a lot of pain in especially the younger generations, although this spans all age groups, there is a lot of bearing witness to what is going on in the collective and feeling tremendous amounts of upset, pain, rage, and a, a, tr a really clear desire to transmute that and to turn that into something else. It, it's giving me the energy of like, I'm not letting them get away with this, which is a massive, a massive positive and benefit right now if if it is catalyzed appropriately. Real quick, because I know I framed that last bit in the context of those that engage in cancel culture, but the more I'm thinking about it, it also reminds me of folks that are deeply entrenched in like Trumpism and the Trump movement. Like it's the same, it's the same concept. They're feeling incredible amounts of passion for what is broken in the world. And there's an energy behind that of catalyzing change. And it's the same, it's the same thing I just said, that that is a massive 
a massive positive if catalyzed appropriately. A lot of time, again, I, I'm very fascinated by the concept of cancel culture, and certainly it isn't something we should allow. Like when other people engage in cancel culture, the rest of us shouldn't participate in that. It's not, it's not an effective way to fix problems, nor is it a society that any of us truly want to live in if we're honest with ourselves. But also you can appreciate the energetic undertone that if that person was just assisted, pushed along their, their own personal healing path. And also maybe if we could create a society in which when someone enacts cancel culture, we don't then enact cancel culture against them. I just see this like pendulum swing of bickering of like, I'm not going to let them get away with it. And then they use cancel culture and then we go, well, we're not going to let you get away with that. And then technically we're also like, it's just, we're, tr we're all trying to cancel each other out with this extreme, aggressive, my way or the highway energy. And it's just two versions of Puritanism going at each other's throats. So I think if those of us that are walking a more spiritually minded path, again, can expand into this concept of radical empathy, see the undercurrent of positive in the people that are leaning towards cancel culture, and maybe just try to create space for them to heal, call attention to what they're doing also, redirecting the conversation towards healing and expanding into what we are trying to create. You're not gonna get everyone. There are a lot of people incredibly attached to the physical three-dimensional world right now. They're digging their heels in the sand. They are very much not ones to want to let bygones be bygones. They are not ones to want to see and understand what is going on in the collective. Um, so those people, you're not going to get everyone. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone's on their own path. Everyone is responsible for their own actions and reactions. Oh my God, my dad used to say that. <laughs> everyone is responsible for their own shit. Um, so you're not going to get everyone. But I think when faced with this my way or the highway energy, the Morrigan's directive to us is to see, see the positive, use that radical empathy, understand, hey, if, if this energy was catalyzed for good, you know what I mean? And we're getting there. We are getting there. It is a slow process. It is needing some course correcting. But if you're wanting to participate in that course correcting, all you have to do is show up as someone that has that empathy for why they're doing what they're doing. Because seeing the truth of someone's actions, even if you don't say anything, you don't convince them of anything, just seeing the truth of the good of why they're doing what they're doing helps to create space in a situation for that highest possible good to come through. The other card that I got was the card of Firefly. And I'm going to read the guidebook, so give me one sec. Okay, so the guidebook says, The Firefly contains the light of a thousand stars. It's pure, radiant, and illuminating. This high frequency charge cannot be sustained for long. Therefore, the Firefly card indicates a moment of inspiration or awakening that quickly fades if we do not catch it. There is Firefly energy behind every poem, song, and invention. Our job is to be ready to harness this creative spirit when it graces our path. What can you do to support this precious and elusive light? When it's in balance, it writes, creates, and brainstorms. When it's out of balance, it is burnt out or feels dull. That is interesting. One message that came through for me right now with this card that I obviously didn't catch when I was filming this is um, that sense of radical empathy is very often fleeting. Like when you do that practice that I recommended or even just doing this in, in person, what usually happens is as your consciousness expands to be able to perceive a higher form of love, a higher form of empathy, you'll catch pockets of that radical empathy where the truth of that person's pain and their actions will momentarily shine through and your soul is able to perceive, perceive that. And then our human egos kick in and start to intellectualize why we shouldn't feel empathy for this person. Oh my God, what they said was so bad. Oh my God, but they're on the other side. They're doing the bad thing. They're responsible for the bad stuff. Just like the energies of Firefly are very often fleeting, a momentary spark, that radical empathy that we're fostering is going to start off very slow, very much like a little spark that shines through. It's our job to not allow our egos to get in the way. 
practice this. It will take time, it will build slowly, but that is, we need to pay attention to our mental chatter as it tries to convince us to not engage in radical empathy. I'm gonna grab a couple of um, tarot cards to go along with this because I think I know the direction the Morrigan wants me to take this, but I just I wanna see if I can get any further clarification on Firefly here. Mm. Okay, that's funny. So I, I just got the same two cards that I pulled for my daily pull for today. And I got the Hierophant, but oh my God, you guys, I have never in my life had a positive Hierophant. And isn't it a sign, a sign of my own personal expansion that this is the Hierophant I have been blessed with? Gorgeous card, absolutely gorgeous card, an actual Hierophant, like what this energy is supposed to encompass, not a religious, dogmatic, controlling figure, but a spiritually ascended leader on a joint collective expansion path. The other card that I got was the Ace of Cups. Let your heart be your Hierophant. So this is very much a, uh, a full moon of empathy expansion. I think that might be what I end up calling this. I'm getting the sense that a lot of us are trying to make sure that we are on the correct path. Um, again, very much using this Hierophant card as my inspiration there. We are kind of walking up this staircase and there's this level of uncertainty of if we're walking the correct path. And oh yeah, I'm being reminded now of, well, first of all, myself, right? Like, I'm so sorry to keep giving you guys whiplash on what I call the two paths, right? Love, authenticity. I'm we're getting tripped up in words, what we're calling it. And another thing I'm seeing in the spiritual community is, okay, so do we, do we talk about the darkness? Do we not, do we focus on it? Are we, are we, are we contributing to it by focusing on it? Like there's a lot of, are we doing the right thing? Questions being thrown around for a lot of us right now that are walking a spiritually minded path. The Morrigan's instruction to us on this is to allow your heart to be your hierophant follow your heart. And specifically what I mean by this is follow resonance. Something that we're seeing in the collective right now with this expansion process is a lot of heart activations, a lot of deep in the chest, deep in the heart center, this like tugging feeling that we're being pulled in all of these different directions. Follow your heart. And if you're having a hard time with this, because sometimes when we say vague things, it's like, okay, well, what does that mean? Follow your heart just means what lights you up? inside. Again, firefly. What lights you up inside? Like when you think about it, when you talk about it, when you do it, what ignites you? What lights you up? Do that. And don't overthink it. <laughs> do not overthink it. This is another thing. And I'm going to get into pulling some shadow cards here in a minute. I can feel myself being pulled in that direction. In fact, let me... Mm. Got card number 38. This is a card of being worried that you'll miss it. This is the Morgan's putting in my head where you're scared we're going to miss it, that we're going to do the wrong things, that we're going to, we're by, <laughs> by failing to focus on the correct thing in the collective, we're going to fuck up the human ascension process, which when you say it out loud, sounds kind of silly. Um, don't put that much pressure on yourself. Holy shit. Follow resonance, follow your bliss. What lights you up inside when you think about it, speak on it, create in regards to it, what lights you up inside? For a lot of us, myself included, one of the things that lights me up inside is paying attention to what the old guard is up to with the explicit intention of bringing light to those situations of transmuting and transcending their darkness into light. That lights me up inside. Um, the original, I think I brought this up in a channeling a number of weeks ago, but the original the way that spirit gets through to us is that original spark of inspiration. In fact, I'm hearing from the Morgan now, a lot of those, a lot of the times you feel that spark of inspiration. That is your soul's path. The reason you incarnated, the mission statement, if you will, of your soul in this lifetime, that is you snapping awake and remembering why you chose to be here in the first place. And then a lot of things, socialization, lower energetic attachments, demons, if you will, will come in 
with a million little reasons as to why you shouldn't do the thing that your heart just exploded with passion about. There are forces in this world that would very much love for you to never step into the fullness and the truth of why you incarnated here in the first place. And by the way, I should also mention, I'm being called to say this now, not all of us have like a huge public, like, oh my God, this person accomplished all of these things. A lot of us, the reason we incarnated here was to face karma, face shit from the past. Um, and so, it, you know, because I, I know sometimes when people talk about this, it's, you know, I stepped into the truth of my soul's mission and now they're like a multi-million dollar author and they have all this huge following. That's not... You're not necessarily, although you could be, depending on what your soul's purpose was, but you're not exactly looking for external validation when it comes to this. It is, again, ask yourself that question, Firefly, what lights you up? That is the thing. That is the thing. Don't overanalyze it. When you feel that spark of inspiration, lean into it, go with it. Just trust it. Um, and it is also a little bit of radical divine surrender in relationship to that, that you trust your higher self, your guides, and your gods will not lead you astray when you are given that spark of inspiration. <laughs> the other thing I'm hearing in relationship to this is that, ooh, yeah. Mm. So if you're here, you're probably pretty interested in spiritual concepts, which is great. You know, it's great to be passionate about a topic and explore that topic. Again, what lights you up. If you feel that energy of confusion of, okay, this person over here believes this philosophy, but this other person believes a different philosophy, but I like both of them. They both seem wise, but they contradict each other. Don't, maybe take a step back from listening to other people's interpretations of what is happening in the collective shift. If you're enjoying it, if there's no confusion, if you're just like, I'm curious what everyone else is saying, that's fine, keep going. But if you are someone, and I've been doing this a little bit, where you're trying to make sense of these times by intellectually interpreting what other people are saying. And instead of listening for the resonance when someone speaks, you're trying to either prove them right or prove them wrong or determine if they're on the right path or the wrong path or doing the right thing or the wrong thing. Step out of your own head for a little bit, you know, give it some space. If you, if you notice that you're doing that, that may be spirit kind of calling to you of like, hey, Take a little step back from this. Stop listening to what other people believe and ask yourself what you believe. And make sure that you're prioritizing the thing that you believe over the thing that other people are saying that you should do X, Y, and Z. That was worth mentioning. I do want to pull some shadow cards now. I am kind of curious. Obviously, this is a full moon. It's a full moon in Aries. I would maybe like to get, if the Morgan is willing to share, I would like to get some information on... The energies of the old guard. What are the old guard up to? Is there anything we should be looking out for? So this is interesting. I did have some cards fly out at me. I got card number 47 and card number four, which you'll notice in card number four, this woman is running away with this baby and she's holding her hand over its mouth and it seems to be screaming and crying. And this is a depiction of someone seeing themselves as more beautiful than they truly are, not seeing... Not seeing the truth of their actions, one might say. Um, and I did get some other, some Xammer Twins Oracle cards, but we'll get there in a sec. Um, when I saw these two cards, the song that popped into my head is that Taylor Swift song, the um, I'm the problem, it's me song. And this was, ironically, this is making me think of a cancel culture-like event because we see... Again, this figure is has her hand over its mouth, almost trying to shut shut up the baby. <laughs> what imagery? Um, and a lot of times, I mean, dare I say, almost all of the times, the people that are engaged in this cancel culture mob mentality, they are not seeing themselves clearly. They are seeing themselves as the victor rather than the villain. And it's creating this sense of um, hero complex. And this is where, so the Xammer Twins Oracle cards that I got were omniscious and punishment. Uh, 
it is so Puritan, so Puritanical, the energy that we see with this. It's this idea of like, I mean, you can tell by the look on, I know this is supposed to be a positive card, but this guy has this look on his face of like, aren't I so just, aren't I so righteous? And of course, paired with the card of punishment, it's a little bit too on the nose. It, it takes this, this holier than thou tone, which is annoying, granted, very annoying. But if I can pluck forth a silver lining in all of this, um, the more egregious, the more grotesque, the more holier than thou pearl clutching this energy of cancel culture gets, the more people are awakened to just how unproductive and unhelpful it is. And I'm interested to see this theme come up for us because we have sort of turned our, our noses up at cancel culture a little bit more as of late. And you know what's interesting? Obviously, I spoke on the whole Russell Brand situation in my previous couple of videos. Um, there have definitely been some developments in that governments are now involved, which is just the most authoritarian of all authoritarian concepts. It might just be that I've cleaned up my social media a little bit, but I have not seen the same level of aggressive, over-the-top, holier-than-thou reactions to Russell Brand. It, the majority of the people that I'm seeing in the collective, it's giving a very sober, somber, like, listen, if there's crime, then, you know, crime is punished. That's the society that we live in. But there is not the same level of religious fervor around around him and around the situation that I think we've seen in the past. Again, could just be a virtue of the social media circles that I run in. Maybe I have done a good job kind of cleaning things up a little bit, but I haven't seen the same level of religious fervor with him. And I'm wondering, I am wondering if this energy of card number 47 is at play here that, hi, it's me, I'm the problem, it's me. I think there has been a little bit of a, a of a reflection on the concept of cancel culture in the collective that we're starting to see the ugliness of it. And when I say we, we've seen the ugliness, like you and I have seen the ugliness of it for years now. But I think the people that used to engage in it from this very omniscious, holier than thou, I am the bringer of divine justice. I think a lot of them are, have started to see, started to see themselves a little bit more clearly. Um, you know, what's interesting too, is that the, the figure that is holding up this mirror is a demon, indicating that there are forces at play here that would very much love for those engaged in cancel culture to see themselves as the victor. And so, you know, there's three different players here. There's the truth of what's happening, the ugliness of cancel culture. There's the veneer of the holier than thou bringer of justice. And then there is the agent of the old guard that is invested in this whole thing, that is holding this whole thing up, wanting it to take root, wanting it to take action. There's also a black cat in the background watching the whole thing happen. So I think the directive from the Morrigan here is that when there are members of our collective that act like this uglier version, that see themselves as, again, the divine bringers of justice, but they're being the problem, um, she's asking us to keep in mind the demon holding the mirror, that it's very easy our, our little human brains want to simplify things and want to find the one singular bad guy. But she's asking us to remember that things are a lot more complicated in this time, that there are a lot of other forces, seen and unseen, that are pulling the strings that are involved in this whole process. As I've said many times, I shy away from no fight. I am, I am not someone that is interested in ignoring what is going on out there in the world, but... The Morrigan is time and time again directing us to focus on the higher battle, one might say. In other words, you're not just arguing with the person that's in front of you. You're not just angry or disgusted with the person that's in front of you and their actions. You're seeing the, the higher fight behind that, the larger entity pulling the strings, and you're directing your frustration, your accountability, and also your light transmutation at that higher thing that is pulling the strings. She's so much less concerned. 
Yeah, I'm getting this very clearly from her right now. She is so much less concerned with the members of our collective that are engaging in cancel culture. She is much more concerned with the entities, be they man-made or spiritual, that are pulling the strings. And that is where we really need to be placing our focus, our energetic atten attention, our transmutation, and also our desire to hold accountable. Although it doesn't excuse behavior, she is asking us to remember that there are many members of our collective that are so incredibly wounded, they're operating on autopilot, one might say. And again, we want to assist those members of the collective to expand into a higher way of viewing the world, but you can't force that shit. And so sometimes understanding that there are souls on this planet right now that are much, much younger than your own. And yeah, this is a way I've been looking at it too, not in a condescending way, but just in a, we're not all the same age. We're not all the same age. Our souls are not all the same age. Some of us have souls that have been here for a very long time, um, have done this many times. And um, so if you're here, you're probably one of those older souls, you might say. But there are also a lot of members of our collective that are going through tower time and they're only on their second, third, fourth incarnation. Some of them, they're first. There are young souls that are navigating tower time. And so those of us that have an older soul, I'm looking at the hierophant as I say this, have an obligation to lead from a higher understanding. Yes, obviously, if someone is engaged in something that is unpredictable or unhelpful, we can try to find effective ways to call attention to that. But your ire, your frustration, and your transmutation, your energetic output goes towards the higher villains, if you will, the higher old guard that is the one that is making this happen. And oh, by the way, the plot to return us to a puritanical way of living is a very old plot. It's a plot that has been going on for an incredibly long time. It is not something that just started in 2016 or 2012 or 2010. This is something from the time we were born, the system we were Im implemented into, the socialization, the schooling system, all of it, religious systems, all of it, was designed to bring us to this ultimate end goal of us turning on one another, us focusing on petty drama and nonsense, and us desiring a more puritanical way of living. There are entities within the old guard that are incredibly old. They were around during puritanical times. They understand how to get human consciousness to desire puritanism. And they are orchestrating things in a way in which that is the most likely outcome that we fall into. And um, again, going back to the beginning of this video, we know one of the best ways to not go down the path of dogma is to learn that you're okay, you're safe, you're sovereign, even when you don't know what's going on. And even when someone sitting across the table from you has done something you deem unacceptable, you're okay, you're safe even when they're saying and believing things that are not what you would have them say and believe. Nine times out of 10, the reason people fall down the path of dogma is that they do not feel safe and they are clamoring and clinging to any system, any group that will momentarily relieve that sensation of not being safe. Okay, I'm gonna end with a Metatron card, which again is something I have not done for a little while. I'm gonna ask for this, to, whoop, whoop, whoop. okay, hold on. Couldn't have said it better myself. So I got three cards that jumped out of me review and reflection. And also she's looking up at what appears to be a full moon. That's very interesting. Time out needed. Also, duality, balance needed. Balance and time out. And the last card, green, heart healing. Let your heart be your hierophant. Metatron is really impressing upon me and I can feel the Morrigan also behind me wanting me to really hammer this home, this final, final point here. You and I have to get really, really, really good at radical empathy for what is to come next. There has, has to be a large number of us here on this planet that are not just talking the talk when it comes to empathy and, uh, you know, quelling the fire of division. It's not enough to just talk about it anymore. We have to actually do it. We must put it into practice. I'm also being reminded now that one of the ways in which we can 
practice this radical empathy is by speaking what we believe. You know, I'll call myself out here, throw myself under the bus a little bit. No. Um, one of the ways I contributed to cancel culture the most was by not saying what I believe because I feared it. And um, I know a lot of us are still doing that. And I do feel that a tide has turned in relationship to this. A lot of us have gotten to the point of no return. Could just be that I'm turning 30 in a couple months. I don't know. It is incredibly important for us to be brave enough to say our piece respectfully, empathetically, but to say it regardless of consequence, but also be the mature... <laughs> I'm going to say it. Be the adult in the room. <laughs> I know we were promised that with the previous election. Clearly that didn't happen, but someone has to be the adult in the room and it, it must be us. We must, when confronted with division, hatred, othering, we have to be the ones to bring balance and to bring review and reflection, to slow things down, slow the energies down, take the teeth out of the pain and the vitriol and the othering and be the adults in the room. And also remembering the archetype of wolf here. It is good to be passionate. It is great to be passionate about justice and sovereignty and the things that you're fighting for, but do not become the fire that was used to burn you in the process. That's something the Morgan has said to us many times. Do not become the villain in the pursuit of being the hero. All right, guys, I hope that that was helpful. I hope that you have a wonderful full moon. I will leave it here for today with your reminder to go forth, upset the powerful, be a heretic. Bye, guys.